Gone are the days when professional athletes were expected to shut up and dribble in the face of social injustice. I recently sat down with NBA star Kenny the Jet Smith. We spoke about his new memoir, Talk of the Champions, Stories of the People Who Made Me, which is out now. Take a look. What inspired you to write this book? Well, there's some permanency in that writing that's different from when you're just talking. But um, I think what inspired me is that, you know, I, I read a lot of, like, self-help books, you know. And, What's your favorite one? Well, I, I, li I like the, I'm, all of the dummy books. Like, I read, like, <laughs> dummies for this. Like, how do you do this? Those are, like, self-help. And, and, and um, Purpose Driven was a really good one that I, I, I read as well. But it's always from one person's point of view. And... I, I just realized how much I was around greatness. And so each, instead of chapter one, two, three, four, it's a chapter named after specific people that were great, that inspired me, that I'm, I realized I had access to, that I almost took for granted. And I wish I had all of that information, like at 20 years old. And now I'm like, I'm gonna share it to the world, wrote it to my kids really as well, so they can be inspired to do great things. You've done a lot more than been a player, been a broadcaster. Social justice has really played a role in who we see in you, even over the last few years. When you think back to when you were a player versus now, could you have ever seen in your playing days, athletes have the ability to stand up and speak out on issues that matter like they do today? Yes, and, and it's funny because, you know, I, I, in, in the book I credit Charles as giving me the voice. Because he's he, always had a voice. He's always had a voice. He, like, he's the most interesting person because even when he was a player, I noticed that in a locker room, they would ask him about pop culture, politics, religion, instead of just the game. And so he brought that to our show. And so I credit him, honestly, with giving me that platform to not just be a, a sports figure, but be a citizen and talk about different things. And so, yes, it's always been there. But it had only been for certain people and certain players. And um, he's a big reason why that's happening today because of what he had done. But you've done more than just weighed in on different topics, yeah. right? You've given a piece of yourself. When yes. you walked off the set after a police shooting, it, it, was, it was like you didn't have the words. You were emotional. How hard was that for you to kind of break through that barrier? Well, that's where the book started. Because when I walked off the set uh, after the George Floyd, I said, you know what? I, I don't think that I should talk about it. I should join the march. I said, that's what I, it was an echo that was telling me to do that. I didn't know why. And I thought about all of the different people that had influenced my life to get me to that moment. Were you afraid to make a move like that? It, no, I wasn't. I think when you're doing something that you feel is correct, you don't ask for anyone's approval. You don't, ask for, you, don't, you don't feel fearful. You never have that it. fear, no matter how powerful you are, of, I, I, I could get fired after that. I could lose everything. No, because in the moment, you just, you're doing what you think is right. George Floyd's death, you said, kind of started this whole thing for you. But the book is also lessons for your children. This is for your yeah. children. You wrote something in the book that I think impacted lots of us. The time you had with your family, your mm -hmm. five children, during the pandemic. How important was that as somebody who has spent so much of his career, so much of his life on the road. Yes, you know, it, the COVID obviously with all of the detrimental things that I was doing, it was also slowing us down. And so my older kids who were in college or living in the area, everyone just said, we'll stay in one home. And they all came back. And so what, what COVID also, when I looked at it as from a positive standpoint, it allowed you to look around your house and see what needed to be fixed. You know what, that light, that I never, I didn't realize that the paint was chipped. But also paralleled it to your life. It also started to, man, that relationship that I didn't have, I need to nurture. I need to express. So it was a fixing process. It was a, a, a de, uh, do-it-yourself home project for those months. And I think that's where I also started to say stories about myself or their grandparents or cousins that they had no idea, that I just experienced it, and I, I took for granted that they knew. And that's when it sparked the thought process there. I always thought I could write a good article about my life, but I didn't know I could write a book. Well, you did. And thank you, thank you, and there it is. How special 
is your relationship with these other three men. Because part of the magic of the show is mm -hmm. we feel like we know you. Yeah. We watch you and we see the, the love, the respect, the admiration you have for one another. Oh, we have a lot of fun, firstly. You know, you, as much as you see me pushing Shaq into a Christmas tree, <laughs> As much as you see me yelling I mean, at Charles. One of the greatest TV moments <laughs> ever, ever. Yeah, ever. As, as much as you, but you learn so, and that's why I wrote in a book about them. You learn so much from them. Like, we talked about the voice from Charles. About how many advertisements yeah. one man could be on in one day. And I asked, this, is, and this is what I asked Shaq. I said, you know, do, how can you be on this? Do you feel like it's oversaturation? <laughs> and he goes, Kenny, we have a short window. I said, yeah, but you do a lot of endorsements. He said, no, no. I do partnerships. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he explained, he's like, I do partnerships, so now I give, they give back. So he's just a great businessman as well that people take for granted. Who is the fastest at racing to the board? Oh, I'm the fastest. I'm would, the fastest. would everybody say that? Yeah, it's, it's only news if I lose. <laughs> it, 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 but if it, me winning is never news. It's always, Kenny lost. It's never, they won. Think about that. Think about that. It's only Kenny Lost. Yeah. Your last message for every kid, for every teen watching this, who, whether they want to be a professional basketball player, they want to be a broadcaster, they just, they idolize you. What do you want them to know? Be a good listener. Because I hear the echo of my mom saying that. Kenny, listen. Just listen. Because listening, everyone wants to be heard in this time. I want to be heard. I want to tell you what I have to say. But being a good listener allows you to have empathy even when you're not sympathetic. And you can say, oh, I understand why that person is like that. And that's the biggest lesson I learned from my mom and, and my dad is like, being a listener is more important than getting your point across sometimes.